Okay, I've uh, only done this experiment about a billion times, up to the point where I've done it so many times, I'd rather stick my finger down my throat and barf. Um, but anyway, a lot of people have not seen this before, so I wanted to show you the um, magnetic seed experiments. This applies to little critters as they're growing, birds, chickens, worm experiments have been done. Um, exposure to any and all sorts of seeds. Over here we have uh, North Pole exposed seeds and over here we have South Pole exposed seeds. I'm so we're about 70% away into the experiment. Now something I first started noticing when I started testing this ages ago is that uh, for some reason, and it was really rather obvious except I wasn't thinking about that, I knew the exposure radically changed things. Now, if you, Well, first let's look at all the dead seeds in the bottom here. I mean there are a lot of dead seeds. But you'll notice that it's a clump. It's actually a nasty mat. Now, when you actually wash these out, and of course, I actually left the water in this so you could actually see this better, since you rinse these out three times a day, you don't leave the water in, but I'm leaving the water in before I drop it out to show you. Uh, the clump, it's like a nasty matted clump, and every time you wash these, you know, you swish them around to get the water moving in the mass of uh, the sprouts. These are alfalfa sprouts, by the way. And I thought, well, maybe it's uh, the way that I'm actually, you know, uh, swishing these around before I dump the water out. And I do that three times a day during the growing process. But that is not it. So I've eliminated that variable out a long, long time ago. And you'll notice here on the South Pole exposed seeds, we basically have no dead seeds in the bottom. So we've got a lot more seeds. But you'll notice that there's no clumping. Oh... It's like, well, you know, you can't ever be perfect in how you swirl the seeds around when you give them a wash three times a day, right? Experiment after experiment after experiment after experiment. It's always the same way. You got uh, very, very few dead seeds here on the South Pole. Tons of dead seeds in the North Pole. They never mat on the South Pole. They always mat on the North Pole. When I'm done, of course, you'll never be able to experience that through the camera. Even to stick in your nose, even at this point on uh, the whole on the top of either one of these. These smell natural, like, you know, just some freshly picked lettuce greens or something. Freshly picked greens. These have a really, really nasty smell. They taste awful. They smell awful. These are, these seeds are from the same batch. This is just magnetic exposure only. Now, I discovered the reason why, since you have rarefaction on the North Pole and you have, uh, uh, compression on the South Pole, you, which occurs at a ratio of 5 to 1, or 1 to 5, depending on how you look at it. The reason why these mat together is kind of complicated to explain, but they actually shrink away um, from spatial divergence. They mat together. I mean, they actually grow in an interlaced pattern together. Once you actually yank them out of there, it's often difficult to yank them out of the top of uh, my jar. On these, they come right out, just whoop. It's like you're pouring out, you know, pouring out something. Over here, it clogs up, and you have to reach in there, and you have to yank it out. Because they're so matted and meshed and intertwined. So, here you can see it. If I actually swish it around, you can actually see right in the center here. Whoops, there we go. There's just a ton of dead seeds right there at the bottom. If I actually tilt the jar around, see? There's a mass of dead seeds. It just... They're not going anywhere. And also a bunch that have really, really stunted growth. But it's always a mash like this. Like I said, you can do this experiment two ways. It's more radical if you actually uh, expose the seeds while they're growing to different divergent fields. But you get the exact same results if you do seed exposure only for a few hours. In other words, I'll actually tape these uh, seeds inside of a paper sleeve, stick them on the North Pole, the South Pole, at the centrifugal edge, not the centripetal center, but the centrifugal edge. And just do seed-only exposure, not during growth or germination or anything like that. And then grow them after that with no magnetic exposure. So the results are always the same. So it's not during the growth process that the exposure is going on. However, if you do that, the results are more radical. The results are exactly the same exposing dry seeds only. This literally means, and this sounds like such a ridiculous nonsense, that you can actually create magic seeds. You can take two identical piles, and I take one identical pile of seeds, split it up, expose one half of the seeds one way, another half of the seeds the other way. They'll grow radically different. Radically different. 
not somewhat different, radically different. Like you can make tomatoes a lot more acidic or a lot less acidic. Well, that's neat. You know, I don't like acidic tomatoes. Well, you can actually grow them where they don't grow up acidic. <laughs> but look at this. You got virtually no dead seeds in here and no clumping at all. And like I said, you know, you think the swishing variable here, you know, when you wash them three times a day over seven or eight day period, it's like, well, that's the variable. You know, you just swished one more than the other. That's not it. You know, time after time after time experiment, it's always the same. So, I'm not totally done with this uh, experiment to show you yet. Um, they're still growing. they got a couple more days to go. But uh, I wanted to show you the radical results uh, uh, five days in on these alfalfa sprouts. Tons of dead seeds, lots of matting. They smell awful. They taste awful. Seeds from the exact same batch. They don't clump. They grow a lot hardier, healthier. They smell good. They taste good. There are no dead seeds. Proofs in the pudding. You know? When it comes to this experiment, I don't give a damn if you believe me. You know, kiss my fanny. Anybody can perform this experiment. Anybody. You do need some large neodymiums, preferably like N50 Gauss, um, 2 by 2 by 1 inches, which are like 40 bucks a piece. But, uh, you know, the results are radical. They're undeniable. And nobody talks about this. Nobody. Do you hear anybody talking? Have you ever heard anybody talking about this in any science lab? Anywhere? Nope, you sure haven't. Does anybody have an explanation for it? No, but I do because I know what magnetism is, what it does, and why things act this way. Thanks for watching. Catch you later. Bye.